Good afternoon, everyone. This is Thompson from AECOM. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, clarify something. Uh, thank you, Silas, to remind me I'm not young anymore. But uh, really need to clarify, that's not 30 years ago. It's just 20-something years ago. OK, so um, this is Thompson from AECOM. I'm uh, uh, one of the digital transformation leader um, in, in the team. And uh, I'm looking after the greater China area. And uh, I'm actually leading a team in Hong Kong to support uh, all our internal um, project, design project, and also our direct client. And the other role that I have is pushing the digital transformation adoption in the greater China area, including PLC and, and Taiwan. So in case uh, you don't know about AECOM, I uh, give you a little bit of um, introduction. AECOM is actually a uh, fully integrated infrastructure firm providing capability to design, build, finance and operate infrastructure assets around the globe. So we have uh, more than 150 um, offices around the world. OK, so today. Um, today's top, um, I mean, the, uh, the theme of today is BIM Talk and Research uh, Forum. Uh, my topic today is about BIM transformation journey in um, AECOM. It's not a research project, but it's really um, related to research on our people within AECOM offices. So uh, the journey that I want to tell you about is like we have some uh, good old days that uh, you all experienced before. And the needs of BIM transformation, the difficulties we face, and how we tackle, it, take, tackle all these difficulties and uh, make our BIM journey um, successful. And then the way ahead that we are still working hardly on. OK, good old days. Uh, like all the organizations in our industry, we have a very effective and uh, sophisticated workflow on design. But it is a two-dimensional kind of um, design workflow. We always have a very first step, a schematic design in the 2D plan, and then draft the 2D design for every single discipline, every single trade. And we have design coordination, but it's on 2D. And then we prepare the doc tender document for construction. And then we prepare the contract document for contractor to build what we, want, uh, what we design. So it's a very good and effective um, process. We uh, use it for, I guess, more than 20 years already. But it's time to change. This workflow needs an upgrade. Why did workflow need to upgrade? Because there is a, quite a lot of driving factors. First one, the driving factor come from internal from AECOM internal. Uh, actually, it's because we are design consultant. We serve our clients. So the client's demand is the number one priority that we need to serve. So um, our client need higher quality, greater reliability kind of products, faster delivery, and high safety standards. So we are thinking how we can achieve this kind of requirement from our uh, clients. So in 2014, AECOM realized there is an opportunity to improve design efficiency and quality by applying digital solutions. So um, one of the very important things is that we um, try to transform our workflow, but we can see there will be a lot of benefits, not only for our clients, but also for AECOM internally. OK. So because of all this initiative, in, uh, again in 2014, um, there is a digital transformation team, a global team is established in AECOM. Uh, we are trying to expand the digital solutions and nurture new ideas to build a better world because of our design project. And actually, AECOM um, worked on a lot of digital technologies, but it was scattered. From, um, it resides on different disciplines. They use their own technology. So the digital transformation team, one of the major goals that they try to achieve is integrate and gather all this technology together into one single umbrella and then try to deliver our innovative differential solutions to clients to boost the performance and also grow faster. OK. Uh, as, one of, as part of the digital transformation team, uh, I I'm, I'm just mentioned I'm looking after the Greater China digital transformation. But uh, as you may all know, um, the, trans uh, the digital adoption in our region, in our industry, is not very fast. 
as uh, Dr. Tan just mentioned, uh, our industry, the construction industry, actually at the bottom of the chart. So we can't jump into the destination very soon. So, um, and, and also because of the beam pot potential of the beam, we found that maybe beam transformation is really the first step that we can apply in the region. Uh, very first step will be in Hong Kong. And again, you all know, sorry, BIM got a lot of um, benefits and potential, especially for our design industry. We can have a very good coordinated approach. We can have more collaborative design that gather people, talk together. Uh, I guess, you, again, you all know, the youngsters these days, they don't talk to each other, they just text. But um, the BIM is one of the workflow that can gather people together because they can really see uh, what they have to collaborate in the, in the models. And of course, we can achieve a better data quality, and then we can deliver to um, our client in an effective, more effective way. Okay. Um, in addition to all those internal initiative or motivation, also the mar market-driven kind of factor is one of the very important uh, factor. Like here, you can see, uh, in 2017, the Event Bureau issued a mandatory beam adoption for all the government works project, which is uh, the amount is bigger than um, three, uh, 30 million. So it's not a very big amount of money. So almost every project we need to apply BIM. And then the lower part of the slide, you can see a report from uh, MBS National BIM report. It's actually it's telling you that across the region or across the globe, people are adopting BIM in a very fast pace. So we are actually need to um, um, catch up what um, the world is doing. Okay, and again, standard. CIC in 2015, they uh, established a standard already. And then we have different standard, different requirement from government, from airport. So this is another kind of driving factor that make people, that make our uh, team need to catch up on, on BIM. Okay, so uh, because of all these initiative and um, uh, requirement, my, my team actually started to uh, promote the digital transformation and beam transformation in the region. But at the very beginning, um, it's in early 2015. At the very beginning, uh, the team is actually like all the beam service provider in the market. We help our design team, we help our different project team to provide BIM model to them and then provide clash analysis report to them. It's actually very effective. Indeed, very um, good kind of workflow that we can at least fulfill the requirement from our client on the BIM part. But very soon we found that this is not the right way to go. BIM is not just for modeling. BIM is just not just for uh, kind of clash analysis report, but BIM is a tool for design in our industry, I mean the design consultant industry. And then BIM is actually an information carrier. It carries a lot of design intent information, construction information, not only for design and construction, but also for asset management, for operation and for maintenance. So it's much more than just a model, just a graphics, or just a three-dimensional model, what people always call. BIM is just three-dimensional model, it's not. But again, uh, like all other big organization, uh, when we try to make a big change on our uh, workflow, on our daily work, we receive a lot of resistance. Like uh, we don't have uh, enough expertise on our different leaders to lead the change. And then organization structure is too big sometimes. And uh, we receive a lot of resistance on change. They, they ask, why, why I need to change? The existing workflow, the good old days are very good. I can design my, my stuff coordinate very well. And then the building or the infrastructure, at last, is able to build up by the strategic workflow. Why I need to change? And then we don't have an overall strategy on digitalization, not only on BIM, but in overall digitalization or digital transformation. And one of the biggest uh, hurdle we face is always employee pushback. Because the youngsters or the old guys, whatever, wh whoever they are, when they involve in a project, uh, because of the project schedule, because of the project um, 
kind of um, resources, they always say, no, it's a new thing. It spends a lot of my time, my money, to work on this new kind of workflow. Better don't do it. I go back to the traditional workflow. So this is uh, one of the biggest hurdles that we always face. And of course, um, limited access to required technical expertise because they don't have enough uh, skill set. They don't have uh, access to the right tool. So this is um, one of the very big hurdles. And thanks to uh, the CITF, because we, we can actually um, fund it to um, get a lot of new tools and um, training to, to do, to do it in, the, in the future. Okay, so how we tackle all these difficulties. And uh, I'm going to tell you the, a bit on the BIM uh, journey that we um, experienced in the past few years to tackle all, that, uh, all those changes. Very first thing, uh, we try to promote to the company, to my bosses, and then to my colleagues, how we are going to embrace this kind of technology uh, to your daily work. The first, very first thing is about uh, BIM training. We are not talking about the BIM tools training. We're talking about the BIM workflow training for different people in different level. So we have uh, group A, B, C, D, and even E training. What are those? Uh, group A training is actually for business side leader, what we call our bosses. At least they have to know what BIM is. When they are talking to um, other bosses, they know what BIM can be used for, or how it is useful how we can help our industry to change our design quality. This is group A. And then group B training is for project manager who run the project. They need to know the workflow. They, may, they are not necessar necessarily to uh, work on the software, how to make a model, but at least they need to know the workflow of BIM. So this is group B training. And then group C, group C is for senior designer. They are really the front end people who design the stuff, so they have to know the software. Not very um, detailed, deep dive kind of um, knowledge, but hey, they have to know how to use the product, like um, how to uh, make use of the family, all these things, so this is group C. And we have the practitioner training, group D. This is most detailed, software related kind of training. Um, this training, we focus not only on the traditional technician people, draftsmen, but also for all the young professionals because they will be the future designer. They have to know all these things. So this is um, the training that we provide to uh, uh, our different project team. But we still have a group E. Why we have group E? Group E is uh, a group of BIM champion across our offices to champion the BIM and uh, BIM improvement work. We uh, try to create a standard within ACOM. We try to create a policy workflow within ACOM to share between, the, between our offices, so that every people can at least have a standard to follow. And then, of course, they can modify according to their uh, local regulations and uh, uh, local project needs. So this is uh, the training. And then workflow, I need to go faster, I think. So this is a workflow, because uh, most of our projects is, uh, across discipline is a multi-discipline -pro project in multi-location. Uh, so we establish a workflow that different team, oops, sorry. Different team are actually um, able to sit at um, different places, but at least the workflow reside on every single discipline. And then have the management people in the, in the middle, within, with also with BIM management to manage the BIM workflow together. And we have a cloud-based BIM collaboration platform, work together with different people from different offices or even third party uh, designers or our clients. And then go into a little bit more detail on one of the workflow within our MEP workflow. We, um, because the workflow we have uh, think for a long, a, a long, long time and then work together with the MEP team, uh, the workflow we really have to change, the, uh, the original workflow is like, even they use BIM. Uh, in a prelim stage, they don't apply it uh, at the very beginning, but only until they, they do detailed design or even construct, um, contract, contract drawing. But it's, that shouldn't be the case. They should have applied um, beam design as early as possible. So we try to put um, one of the beam design coordination in a preliminary stage. Maybe they can use LED 100 or 200 to try uh, within some critical area within a say, service corridor 
if there's enough space for them to design their, their, their MEP stuff. If not, just go away. Don't, don't walk through that corridor. And then it actually saves a lot of, ti of their time on, and in the detailed design uh, stage because uh, their old workflow is like when they do it in des detailed design, but actually they plan all everything in prelim design already. It's hard for them to change the route. So uh, we try to embrace the BIM design workflow in their traditional workflow, not just change the entire workflow or not just follow their workflow, but embrace BIM as few steps in their, in their workflow. Okay, so um, I just talk about the workflow, the training that we uh, provide to uh, our colleagues in, in AECOM across the region. But another thing is um, equally important or even more important is that how we can change the mindset of our people. Workflow is easy to define is technical. Training is easy to provide because we just need to um, define the content, the right content, and then uh, search for a trainer to, to train our people. But mindset is actually very hard to change. So um, on mindset, mindset thing, we uh, actually introduce, uh, invite most of our leaders, I mean our bosses actually, become the BIM champion in the company to promote BIM as one uh, as the future design tools. So they are actually taking the leading role to promote BIM. And then we also uh, set up some metrics to measure how BIM is being implemented in the company. And the human resource people is also coming to the place and um, help us to um, measure and uh, promote it to the new staffs. And of course, one very important thing is about how, 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 how can uh, we be patient to our, new co to our colleagues? Because it, it won't be a short period of time we can see the result. We need to be patient, uh, no matter our bosses or the leader. We need to be patient to wait for uh, the changes. But of course, we um, try to put a lot of effort and then uh, different tools to help our people. So this is about um, how we change our, the mindset of our people. And then, uh, one thing I um, applied it to, no matter Hong Kong or um, Greater China, we, we are trying to uh, select project to implement BIM. Like government, before we uh, try to implement BIM in some pilot project. Same in AECOM, we implement BIM workflow in pilot project. But we are not selecting those projects which is very big or very iconic or very important. No, that's not, of course that's one of the one of the selection criteria, but that's not the only selection criteria. The selection criteria of the BIM um, pilot project is like we are selecting the project leader to help us to implement BIM in their project. If we, if we are um, picking a leader who is more conservative, it won't be able to success, I mean, the project implementation. So we need to have some leader who is open mind, who can work together on BIM implementation. So at least we can have some successful project. Uh, I, I'm like a salesman here because I need to report to my bosses uh, whether the BIM implementation is good or bad. So one of the key um, elements is like we need, really need some open mind leader to help implement the BIM process and workflow in our project in um, a big organization. Okay. So the BIM journey is actually like um, we, we are driving by all the supply, demand, uh, from no matter internal or external. And then also because of uh, many standards that are coming out, we have to follow. So we have to change our uh, actually mindset and workflow daily. And then we um, provide training, mindset training, technical training, uh, project workflow training to all our uh, colleagues across the region so that they can be equipped um, to help a successful implementation of project. And again, the project leader is really the key driver of um, BIM implementation. I, I guess it's uh, applicable to uh, many of the organizations. Okay, so uh, BIM transformation, we um, actually work on for more than four years already. But is that a, a stop? No, uh, we didn't stop there. Actually, we can't look back. We are not going in that way. We should look forward. So in, within AECOM, no matter what region, we are talking about 
a bigger challenge, which is a digital transformation. This is four area that we are uh, um, actively looking at. So the first one is digital engineering, including BIM, including different technology that can help in digital engineering, more on design stuff. And then we are looking at data capture analysis. We are applying different kind of data capture process to, to get the information easily, faster, and making use of it across our project life cycle. And then modern construction techniques uh, like 3D printing, like robotics, that um, one few of our teams are looking at these kind of um, construction techniques. And immersive technology, virtual, uh, virtual reality, mixed reality, or augmented reality. People may say virtual reality is very good looking, a uh, simulation tools, but actually it's not only for visualization. We are trying to apply design review workflow in uh, virtual reality. We tried uh, in a project that across Taiwan, Hong Kong, and UK. And every single, uh, not every single, but three of us, uh, go into the same virtual environment to share the design problem and in a one-to-one -one kind of scale so that people can see what's going on in the real kind of environment. Of course, it's virtual, but because of the spacing, the scale are actually the same in the real world. So it's very effective, actually. So I'm overrun. Uh, okay, uh, last two slides. Uh, these are those um, technology we are using in AECOM, not only talking about the technology, but really apply all this technology to our project. We um, apply BIM, of course. We uh, integrate BIM and GIS to many different clients. Uh, we uh, have our own certified drone pilot to do data capture, to do photogrammetry. And then we have uh, IoT immersive kind of um, technology in one of the um, AMFM BIM integrated project uh, so far. So this is uh, what we are actually doing for our client already. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, we are actually in the digital construction era already. So please try to create your stuff, create your design, create your built environment in a digital way. And then we have many tools which actually can enable you to do that. And of course, one very important key is transforming our people, our mindset to become a digital kind of mindset. Okay, thank you very much.